Hello, and first of all, thank you to everyone who's come this evening, but I'd like to offer a special thank you to everyone who marched today. I was delighted to be able to march with you from Bedford, and I'd particularly like to say thank you to the 300 milers. Those are the people who are walking every step of the way, who told me some great stories about what's happened thus far, so thank you very much for that. And what I want to do is share with you a couple of my experiences from today. And the first thing is, I'd urge you if you could even walk a mile, walk half a mile tomorrow morning as the march leaves Luton, try and do it because it's an inspiring experience. Because so many people are tooting their horns, giving thumbs up, encouraging, showing their support for the NHS. And there's so, many, so much strong feeling out there and it's so very clear. And this morning, I only just made the start of the march because of uh, the trains. I'm sure you all know about the trains from London and the, the stories of those. And as I said then, you know, Green Party policy renationalised the railways. It can... But I've been talking to a lot of people along the way and many people didn't know this really quite surprising fact that among Tory voters, a majority of Tory voters are actually in favour of renationalising the railways. Yes. And I think if you did a survey, I'm confident if you did a survey of Tory voters and said, do you support keeping the NHS public? You would get a strong majority of Tory voters. And I say that particularly because the BMWs, the Chelsea tractors, the people, really quite surprising cars, the drivers of whom were showing their support today. So there's huge support out there for the NHS. And that's something we've just got to really make clear. And the other thing we've got to make clear is how much under threat that absolutely critical principle of services free at the point of use is. I was talking to a lad behind the bar in one of the pubs we stopped in today. And he was like, what's this all about? You know, I only found out about this when the, when the, when the manager said you were this morning you were arriving. And what's this business? I didn't know they were privatising the NHS. And so I told him a bit about that. And then I said, and do you know there's a lot of talk around about making you pay to see a GP? And you know, he's a young lad, probably early 20s, and he said, they couldn't make you pay to see a GP, could they? And I said, that's what they want to do. And he was converted at that moment. And that's what this march is doing, that's what you're all doing here by being this evening, is getting the message out that our NHS is under threat and we're going to say, no, we will defend it. And we've got some really critical principles that we just have to lay down and say these are essential. And the first principle that we say in the Green Party is the profit motive has no place in healthcare. You might have seen, and I'd urge you if you haven't to go away and look at it, Professor Alison Pollock, yes, just yesterday, produced a proposal for what a bill should look like to rebuild our publicly owned and publicly run NHS. And there's two principles in it. The first principle is that simply no profit making companies. And the second principle, which is the one we've really got to start making traction on, is to say Competition shouldn't be the foundation between institutions. Cooperation should be. So let's get rid of the idea of comp competition in the NHS. Now again, talking to people today, it's very clear that there's both a lot of hope but also a lot of fear. The fact is, it feels like neoliberalism, Thatcherism has been governing our public discussions for the past 30 years. But actually, this is now very clear, and it's increasingly clear to more and more people, this is a bankrupt, broken, failed ideology. The fact is, it's time for a big change in British politics. You go out and talk to people, and they mightn't quite have got this yet, but you look at the surveys and people say, I'm really worried. I'm not sure that my children or my grandchildren will have a better life. I fear they're going to have a worse life than I've had. 
And so now is time to say, let's build a different kind of society, a society that works for the common good, not just for the good of the 1% of the richest, a society that makes sure everybody has enough and everybody has the health care they need, free at the point of use, provided by public institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Our final speaker is Kelvin Hopkins. Um, Kelvin, please come up. But before Kelvin goes, I just want to say, Kelvin has been absolutely remarkable. His track record, he's anti-war, he's anti-austerity, he's anti anything.